Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the first ever President's Panel in honor of Hispanic Serving Institutions Week. My name is Adelva Lorenzano, and I'm joined today with my Title V colleagues, Dr. Gupri Bogle, Dr. Stephanie Briones, Juliana Martinez, and David Childers. We're very excited to have you join us today. As we, be we begin today's event, I ask that you take into consideration what does it mean to be an HSI? And what are you doing to serve our students in your role? Now, I'd like to introduce Dr. Stephanie Briones, moderator for today's event. Thank you so much, Adelpha, for that kind introduction. And welcome, everyone, to this webinar. Uh, we thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day, especially during lunchtime. Uh, but we promise that you're in for a treat. And so as Adolfa mentioned, this is the start of Hispanic Serving Institution Awareness Week. And so we wanted to kick this off by uh, asking our leadership within the district uh, specifically on the importance of being a federally recognized Hispanic serving institution and what essentially does servingness mean within these contexts. And so before I begin by asking and introducing our presidents, I'd like to introduce Chancellor Goldsmith to give a introduction and a hello to the panel. Well, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Baronis and everyone who's come together to put together this first ever uh, HSI servingness uh, webinar. We're really excited by this. Uh, as you may know, last week, our board took action on the first ever resolution uh, for Hispanic Heritage Month. And what a fitting uh, activity this is in Hispanic Serving uh, Awareness Week. And uh, you asked the question about uh, the importance of being an HSI and what that means in terms of the United States Department of Education. And for those of you who uh, are just tuning in and you may not know, um, let me share with you the U.S. Department of Education. Uh, the, to get the federal definition, you have to have your um, your head count or your student body count be at least 25% uh, Hispanic. And just a, a little bit of data that the, the AR, IR folks gave me this morning, uh, we definitely surpassed that. Uh, Clovis Community College has over 4,000 students currently, which puts them in at 50, or excuse me, 49% of their population is Hispanic. Uh, Marrera Community College coming in at 3,993 uh, students, which puts them at 69%. Uh, very impressive uh, uh, for Madera. And then uh, Reedley College, which has our highest population percentage with 6,633 students being Hispanic, representing 75% of the student body being Hispanic. And Fresno City College being our largest institution with 14,630 students are representing 64% uh, population. So when you think about those numbers, 14,000, 6,000, 4,000, there are literally thousands of reasons why we want to think about being a better servant to our Hispanic serving um, institutions. How can we uh, take that servingness up a notch? So it's about awareness. Uh, and some people may think, well, why would we even want to be uh, uh, HSI? Well, if the numbers don't uh, sway you, let me give you another reason why. The U.S. Department of Education has a number of grant opportunities that are only um, uh, uh, eligible for uh, HSI gra uh, granting institutions, which at last count across the nation, there's only about 450 uh, institutions that are Hispanic uh, federally HSI uh, serving. So uh, for us, it's important, how can we um, support our students and their success in a way uh, that fosters a welcoming and inclusive environment? Uh, how can we enhance uh, their success and their uh, experience? How do we engage with the community in a way that uh, is mutually beneficial uh, to our Hispanic population? Uh, the opportunity for cultural exchanges, again, looking at our mission to serve students. So again, I, I just wanna say thank you for bringing us all together. This is the first time we've done this. You're gonna hear from our presidents today about what is going on specifically at their colleges. And uh, I just want to thank everybody who's taking time during your lunch break. 
uh, to join us. And uh, again, congratulations to all of our organizers to what will be the first of many of these events coming in future years. So thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Dr. Goldsmith, for that wonderful introduction um, and that wonderful motivation to be active listeners and also to think about um, some future steps for HSI Awareness Week. And so I'm speaking on behalf of one of our programs that specifically are grant-based, based upon HSI designations, and those are Title V grants. And Title V is basically um, DHSI grants, so Developing Hispanic Serving Institutions grants. So as the directors, we felt that it was very important and imperative to have these conversations and to show all of the wonderful work that is currently being done on our individual campuses and also within our district. Uh, so what better place to ask about leadership and to ask about serving this than to ask our presidents to share a little bit about serving this within their college. So we have four presidents here today. So Dr. Kim Armstrong is here from Clovis Community College. Dr. Jerry Buckley is here from Reedley College. Dr. Robert Pimentel is here from Fresno City College. And Dr. Angel Reina is here from Madera Community College. And so we have two questions here today uh, because I know that we will definitely have a lot of specific examples. But as I did say in the webinar uh, chat, if there are any questions that you may have, I would encourage you to write them down in the Q&A section. If we have time at the end, uh, we may have uh, some opportunities to do a Q&A session, but we also hope to continue this conversation afterwards as well. So please feel free to ask your questions throughout. And so the first question, um, I'll direct it to Dr. Armstrong and Dr. Buckley to begin. Uh, and that is, what is your definition of HSI serviness? And what are some current examples of serviness within your institution? Would you like for me to go first? Uh, yes, please. Okay. This is a very important question that I was brought was, was brought to my attention when I came to Clovis. I had a chance to meet with Dr. Briones and we talked about this very question. The definition of uh, being HSI is based on numbers as Dr. Goldsmith had, has, has said earlier, and we do have 49%. But what intrigued me was when we talk about servingness and that does mean how do we actually serve beyond just having the numbers? What are we doing to make sure that we are being respectful, but also advancing the needs of our Hispanic and Latinx students. Some of the things we're doing on campus, one, I want to bring to your attention that for two years in a row, Clovis Community College has rated number one in the state for Latinx student rate of transfer to a four-year institution. So not only are we having the numbers of HSI of, of Hispanic students in our colleges, we also are making sure that they graduate and transfer at a high rate. That's very important. Number two, we have the on campus, you will see on both our campus, excuse me, you will see the Monarch butterfly flags flying. We're letting our students and our community know that we are supported and we have services on our campus to support those DACA students. They are welcome here. So a very visible uh, demonstration of who we are and what we believe in. Number three, and I'm very proud of this one, during our crush days orientation, we have the, the um, information provided in Spanish so that our families who are supporting our students, because we do know that is a very family focused uh, culture. We're being very attuned to that and we are providing the information in Spanish so that the parents and other support systems, grandparents, aunts, uncles who are all there to support their students during orientation are involved and know what's being said. So we're very proud of that too. And, the, and we have a president's 
advisory committee, a Hispanic advisory committee, because again, we recognize the importance of the community. So these community leaders who volunteer to serve on my advisory committee are serving as mentors and other resources to connect our students into the communities that they live in and that, that they serve. And then of course, as mentioned earlier, we do have the Title V grants that we are most proud of, especially that one in STEM, to encourage more of our Hispanic students to go into and be successful in the STEM areas. Dr. Buckley. Thank you, Dr. Armstrong. I guess I'll begin by simply uh, saying that I did a bit of research myself to take a look at serving this. We've certainly seen uh, a recent webinar on that topic, but I wanted to really read more deeply on the subject and looking at a recent uh, article that was sponsored by the American Council on Education. Uh, serving this in terms of its structures can be really defined in terms of uh, components of your mission and purpose statements, uh, as was mentioned, uh, grant support, uh, your decision-making processes, uh, equity-minded leadership, your policies, as well as curricular and co-curricular structures, and uh, institutional advancement activities, diversity of faculty, staff, and administrators, and finally, as Dr. Armstrong mentioned, engagement with the community. So if you think about uh, Reedley's history, one of the things that stands out is that we've had a 35-year history of working with federal grants, uh, specifically Title III TRIO grants, to engage uh, our younger population and their families. In fact, as Dr. Armstrong mentioned, we have a regular meeting each year with uh, the families themselves in Spanish to pursue uh, why higher education is important. And so we like to think that our Upward Bound and Educational Talent Search programs, of which we have actually eight of those TRIO grants, uh, they feed, if you will, the younger uh, generation, the high schoolers as well, into our college programs. Uh, beyond that, uh, you can see that we also have three Title V grants that are currently working in concert to help build more uh, support for our, uh, Hispanic uh, students as well as actually enhance the environment for all of our students. Uh, our mission, vision, and values obviously support the work that we do as well. We can look at our academic indicators and realize that of the number that uh, Dr. Goldsmith mentioned, uh, when you look at persistence in our population, the average persistence of our students is 68%. You look at our Hispanic uh, population, and that's at 71%. The average three-year completion is uh, at 17% compared to 17% for Hispanic students. And then uh, finally, total awards. Uh, last year, we awarded roughly 2,600 awards. 2,000 of those went to our Hispanic students. So I think you can see that uh, the work that we're doing certainly can be reflected in the outcomes that we measure as well. We have a number of other things we could comment on. There are non-academic indicators, uh, including uh, our club structures and whatnot. Uh, we have other skills that are uh, certainly emphasized. Uh, we have an equity committee that works uh, specifically in the area of uh, developing uh, concepts such as uh, we'll talk about a bit later, uh, looking to uh, develop a multicultural center here on campus to in, indeed Im impact our engagement with our students. That's a, a major factor. So I think I'll let that be it for now. Thank you so much, Dr. Armstrong and Dr. Buckley. Um, I really found the importance of community and family to be especially relevant within serving this because when we do serve our students, we serve uh, a community and a culture as well. And so I'd be really interested in hearing further examples of serving this from Dr. Pimentel and Dr. Reyna. I can get started. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, well, we, we have structures for serving at Fresno City College that we've set up, and I think it aligns pretty well with some of the uh, definitions that have been provided already on servingness uh, for HSIs. Uh, for example, you know, we have a, a mission statement, value statements that, you know, are really anti-racist and equity-centered, um, very important to the work that we do, not just for Hispanic students, but all of our students. Uh, but because we are a Hispanic serving institution, it's it's really well aligned with with the definition of servingness for 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 this purpose. 
Um, we have an equity plan, for example, that really focuses on our men of color, you know, and, and Latino males are one of the one of the main focuses that we have at this campus to to recruit and retain um, and continue to work with to to get them to the graduation day. Uh, we also have a variety of uh, HSI grants that that we've been uh, trying to set up the campus to uh, to really serve students uh, or Hispanic students in this case and get them to that finish line. Uh, we're trying new things, trying to see what works so that we can sustain it. You know, with with Title Five grants, you have to sustain the work that you're that you're trying out. So we're really trying to see how it's going to work to to make sure that we continue to push that work forward. Uh, we. We engage with the community, and and that's very important, you know, as an HSI, uh, because the community brings a lot of ideas to us that we maybe haven't thought about. Uh, I have meetings with many community members uh, that that bring ideas. Some of them are, are not are not something that we want to do, but you know, they are ideas at the end of the day, and and so uh, we try to make sure that they know that their voices are being heard, and and some of the programs that we have here on campus. Uh, we're also hiring staff that looks like our students. Uh, slowly but surely, we we're changing the landscape of how our uh, staffing looks on our campuses. I think the whole entire district is doing a very good job at doing that. Um, and then, you know, just hiring staff that's equity minded that that knows um, it, it. It's not necessarily staff that looks like students. That that's not the only thing that's important. It's also staff that really aligns to to the mission of the colleges. That that that's super important. Um, and then we have special programs like mentoring programs and, and things of that nature so that we could uh, make sure that we um, continue to serve our, our students in the way that they need to be served. Um, when I was doing a little bit more digging and more research on this, um, you know, the, the experience of students is very important. And if you uh, have an opportunity to walk to Fresno on the Fresno City campus, you, you'll find a lot of cultural activities. And I think those are very important to serving this um, as an HSI. Now, Pass it, pass it on to Dr. Reina. Thank you, Dr. Pimentel, and buenas tardes a todos. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure and honor to be with you here this afternoon. Um, you know, as obviously my colleagues have shared a lot already, um, but for me, in terms of how I define uh, Hispanic um, servingness, is the creation of the sense of belonging. I think for me as also Hispanic, Latinx identified uh, student, um, that sense of belonging at a higher education institution was a challenge for me. I didn't feel like I belonged. Um, and that was a challenge and a barrier for me. I recall when I you know, even went to get my master's, et cetera, I didn't feel like I belonged. I wanted somebody to come and tell me, you don't belong here, you need to leave. And I would have been comfortable with that because you know, I've, I've truly felt that. And so one of the things as we get into, you know, what my colleagues have shared about how you define serving this is the decision making aspect of it. So that lived experience as a Hispanic Latinx identified individual, I can help make decisions that are relevant to the community that we serve, because the main reason that I applied at Madera Community College uh, when uh, for the president job is because I wanted to represent and reflect the students and the community that I serve. Um, and those things are critically important as we define the percentages of who we're serving, et cetera. To Dr. Pimentel's point, those things matter when students can see themselves in individuals that are leaders and are, you know, making decisions that impact them. It's critically important. Also that they're, they're equity minded, of course. So some of the things that that we've been doing is, uh, I think some of our colleagues shared is signage. I think that matters. As you come into Madera Community College, the sign you see says, welcome to Madera Community College and right underneath it, it says bienvenidos. So we wanna make sure that not only our students, but also our faculty and staff know that they're welcome on this campus, right? Um, I remember when I was you know, a dean somewhere and they did that at one of the colleges, I felt welcome, even as a dean. I was like, okay, wow, this is like something I haven't seen, and it, it I, I felt that. Um, the other piece, you know, as we talk about what are some programming and things that we're doing, uh, you know, we're very proud. We became the fourth uh, community college in the state of California to get the College Assistance Migrant Program because it was near and dear to my heart because of my lived experience and the community that we serve. Uh, the other piece that we're working on collaboratively with faculty is the culturally relevant curriculum and pedagogical approaches uh, to validate 
the lived experience of our students and our community, not only for Latinx, Hispanic identified, but all of our students, um, because I think it's critically important for them to feel that connection inside the classroom as well. Uh, the, what we're also doing is, you know, when we have the opportunity to try to hire a, a ethnic studies faculty member, we knew the first one we wanted to hire was Chicano, Chicana, Chic uh, Chicanx, uh, Latinx identified faculty member because of the students that we serve. Um, one of the other things that uh, we've done in our commencement when we had our first ever commencement was uh, I made the decision to bring in a mariachi band because that connects with the community that we serve and it's gone a long ways and everybody loves it and they've loved it because you could see in our videos after the fact families stick around and listen to the mariachi music and are dancing with their family members in celebration so those are some of the things that we've done and i know as a as a newer institution you know we were also recognized as the latinx equity champion which uh, like dr armstrong we're very proud of um, and we also want to see you know how how are these things that we're doing impacting all of our students because as presidents all of our students matter but just highlighting some of the things with our latinx latinx hispanic uh, identified students um, and then i'll turn it over to you uh, dr riona so i could go on and on but i, I want to leave space for all of us here to share no thank you dr Reina. i appreciate that uh one thing that i found from all four of our presidents is the importance of belonging and community. So we do that in a lot of different ways. We do that in inviting the community voices, inviting the community perspectives, inviting it in multiple languages. But we also do that in terms of our nonverbal, uh, in terms of our, what our policies represent, what our curriculum represents, who our faculty look like, what our signage represents. So all of these are really important aspects to building that sense of community. Not only are we ensuring that students are successful, but we're ensuring that students feel safe and connected. And one population that our campuses are doing that with is specifically our Latino population. So uh, I really appreciated all of these answers and these insights. And the most important thing for HSI Awareness Week and for these HSI initiatives is the hope that we can keep this momentum going and that we can um, see engaging and innovative ideas within our future. So we'll move on to our second question and uh, we'll begin with Dr. Buckley and Dr. Armstrong. And that's how do you intend to continue these efforts of serviness and or expand upon current efforts in the future? Dr. Armstrong, since you mentioned me first, do you mind if I That's take- That's what I want to go right ahead. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Well, building on uh, some of the comments I made earlier uh, and the uh, words of my colleagues, I agree that uh, engagement is probably the single most important factor that we need to not only consider from our past, but also look forward to in our future. Uh, one of the reasons why in our Title V work, we actually formed uh, a an office of uh, Hispanic serving uh, uh, programs, which is headed up by Adelpha. So we are looking for ways to basically integrate and sustain our, our work even beyond grants for that matter. So for example, in our equity uh, committee plan, the equity plan for Reedley College, uh, we do talk about the, the need to use data to help inform our processes uh, even looking at our various pathways and finding out uh, within our various groups, where do we need to apply uh, additional resources? And for example, one that came recently, uh, the beginning of this semester, uh, we uh, spent $400,000 on additional support for students. And it turned out that one of the major areas in our population of students, primarily Hispanic, was the issue of transportation. And so gift cards for gas actually uh, turned out to be one of the major factors that helped our students remain in school. So that's something we not only did uh, at the beginning of this fall semester, we're looking for ways to sustain that effort to help uh, students that have transportation issues beyond the, the normal issues of uh, providing bus passes and related uh, solutions. So we're, we're trying to be creative in that area. Uh, we also, as I mentioned, are, are really looking at a way to uh, 
develop a multicultural center on campus where our, our uh, various uh, affinity groups can meet directly with students and help provide that mentorship that Dr. Pimentel talked about. I know many of us are doing the same sorts of things, but in specific ways that uh, really are uh, unique to our individual campuses. I know in our case, uh, our basic needs uh, have expanded just uh, logarithmically, especially over the pandemic. And we're looking to create an entire basic needs center this year that not only meets the students' immediate needs, but then also, uh, much as Fresno City is already doing, ties them into our existing uh, social services within the county to make sure they have sustained support uh, throughout their career as a student here and beyond, for that matter. Uh, as was also mentioned, uh, we are looking to increase our professional development footprint to make sure that the curriculum is indeed uh, cult uh, uh, sponsoring cultural competency amongst our faculty. And for that matter, we have a similar program amongst our classified staff. So those are some ways in which we hope to grow towards the future. Uh, but above all, we want the campus to look and feel welcoming, much as it does on that very first day when we're all on, on campus, actually welcoming our new students. In fact, I can remember helping over a dozen students myself on the first day of classes this, this fall. I don't think anything replaces having that individual contact with a student, helping them find where they need to be that very first day. I agree with everything my colleague, Dr. Buckley said. I do want to say something about um, some of the things that I've been I've seen since I've been here, and one is, of course, Fresno City's uh, men of color. I have been informed that one of my Hispanic male student success coaches is is starting a men of color program on our campus specifically for Hispanic males. So again, when there is a uh, an opportunity or initiative that's working, it's very nice to be able to look at that learn from it and, and replicate it so that our students can have the same kind of opportunities. And of course, to partner with Fresno City and all of our, our all of our initiatives because they have come to the college and have helped us. So I'm very, very thankful for that. The other thing that we're looking to do is um, create more engagement opportunities on campus. This is very important post COVID. Uh, as you know, or may not know, we have a high school right across the street from us. And I had a unique situation, and Dr. Briones knows about this, where a student actually contacted me and a couple of our deans and said, do you have any kind of student uh, specific uh, club for Hispanic students? And I said, not at this time. So she's been at the table with us and with our community advisory groups and helping us to figure out what the needs are, especially for that age population. So that's very important. We're very excited to increase our number of activities, but also to listen to our students and their needs. With that also being said, we are looking at doing more uh, focus groups very specific to our groups or Hispanic, African-American, Asian-American, uh, LGBTQIA+, very specific finding out from them, the student's voice, what those needs are. So these are things that we're doing. And I think I have mentioned just about all of them. But again, most importantly, like we we're saying before, engagement, helping our students to feel welcome on our campuses. And that's what we're looking to increase at Clovis Community College. Thank you so much, Dr. Armstrong and Dr. Buckley. Uh, Dr. Armstrong, I love when you said we want to take ideas and initiatives that are being done from our sister colleges and continue that effort. And that's one of the main reasons why as Title V, we all came together as a district because in some ways, you know, we don't wanna reinvent the wheel, but in other ways we wanna support our district together and support our initiatives and our equity mindedness together. And so the ways to do that is really just seeing the best practices and um, continuing those efforts. So that way our students feel included and welcomed at all four of our campuses. So I really appreciated the that comment and that sentiment. And we'll continue on with Dr. Reyna and with Dr. Pimentel. Uh, so for question number two, as a reminder, how do you intend to continue the efforts of serviness and or expand upon current initiatives and efforts in the future? And I'll, I'll go first just to mix it up a little bit. Um, thank you, Dr. Briones. Uh, I just want to set a little context uh, for folks that may not know. Uh, we won the Lumina Million Dollar Challenge about a year ago. 
the framework was around uh, sentido de pertenencia, which is that sense of belonging that I shared previously. Um, and I, I state that uh, because we wanted to center the majority of the students that we serve and the community that we serve. And when we made that application and the um, implications they had in terms of what we were going to do after the fact. And Dr. Buckley mentioned this. So one of the things within uh, the grant, we indicated we would develop a multicultural center uh, for our students. And that is in process. It's currently in DSA. So we're, we're moving on that. Uh, another thing with the Lumina Foundation was to develop community events on our campus. We had an open house in April. Our second one uh, will be October 14th. But our messaging using the radio stations, TV, has been primarily in Spanish uh, to be able to engage our community. I don't know if anybody saw the Fresno State uh, Eastern Washington game, but we had a commercial there. Um, in Spanish, and we wanted to be able to support that, but we were out there representing the district, of course. Um, the other thing within the Lumina Million Dollar Challenge are murals, and we just actually closed that out, and we have about six murals uh, that are going to be on our campus, and we paid top dollar, I should say Lumina did, um, so we're going to get top-notch uh, artists that are going to present, and they're all around um, Hispanic servingness in terms of the murals primarily. So we're good. one of them is, you know, migrant farm worker agricultural uh, mural. Another one is on Chicano art. Um, another one is of our student graduates. Um, two other ones, one is of Dolores Huerta and another one of Cesar Chavez. And then the last one is of our indigenous community because of the land we are, we're situated on. Um, and so we're putting some of the things that we've done into action to you know, support our students and, and our college, of course. Uh, the other thing, one of the things that we started and I wanna continue to expand on is having a, a parent Spanish night. As you know, my colleagues have mentioned previously, um, our students are very well connected to their parents. Um, and you know, as I reflected when we had our first Spanish night, this is just a personal story, uh, my wife, shared with me, you know, my parents, she was the first in her family to go to, to a community college. And she told me, you know, I'm, I'm glad you're having this for parents because when I went to community college, my parents thought I should be in school all day. And so when I was coming home midday because of scheduling, they thought I was skipping classes and I wasn't doing what I needed to do. Um, and or the financial aid aspect. And I think we kind of know some of those things. So we were able to address some of those things. And I think it's critically important that we know the students that we're serving, we know the families that we're serving and the culture more importantly that we're serving um, to be able to educate and make them partners in the education. And I know some of us do, uh, you know, the Padres Como Compañeros uh, sessions and that's very helpful too. But I think we did it right before the beginning of the semester and it was very helpful. The other thing that we've done, we've engaged with the migrant education program um, here locally. And when we met with them, you know, they, they told me, hey, 90% uh, of our students that are Madera Unified uh, that are in the migrant education program go to Madera Community College. And I asked them, have we done anything formally to make those students feel welcome and create a seamless pathway to us? And they said, no, we haven't. So what we did my first year here, and then COVID interrupted a little bit, is we created what was called the first annual Migrant Youth Leadership Conference. On our campus, we had over 200 students attend with some family members. Then we restarted that last December, and we're gonna continue that uh, this December or November once again, because we wanna make sure that our students feel welcome even before they arrive, and their parents feel welcome even before they arrive on our campus. The last uh, thing that I'll mention in terms of what we're doing to continue this is we mentioned men of color, um, peer mentoring and so forth. So we're working with San Diego State and Dr. Frank Harris to develop a peer mentoring program because at Madera Community College, we have the lowest percentage of men of color that are attending percentage wise. And so one of the things we wanna do is address uh, that component. Um, and, and I just will end on my piece is that um, you know, Hispanic servingness and equity work and anti-racism work isn't just Title V work. It isn't just 
the you know the president's work. It isn't just the chancellor's work. It's all of our work. Um, and I just want to make sure I stress that and share that. Thank you. I'll turn it over to Dr. Pimentel. Thank you, Dr. Reyna. Well, it's a little hard going last because they've all said everything that I wanted to say. <laughs> but I, I do want to go back to the concept of, of making our students feel welcome at the campus. I think it's very important that our students um, identify with, with people on campus, our, our staff, our faculty, um, and, and that our, our, our folks on campus are understanding of, of where our students are at and where they're coming from. I, we do a lot of stuff here on campus. We do a lot of professional development for our, our faculty, our staff. Anyone that is hired uh, that is brand new to our campus goes through a series of trainings uh, just to make sure that they understand what, what our mission is, what our vision is. And uh, so any of our new faculty and staff that are coming to the campus, they, they really have an understanding of where we're going. Um, and hopefully they feel welcome themselves, you know, coming to a campus that is really focused on making sure that students feel welcome here. Um, and if they don't, then, you know, that's a different story. But we, we want to make sure that people are, are really uh, understanding that this is, this is Fresno City College is a, is a place for students to come and feel welcome. Um, all of our students, uh, regardless of race, ethnicity, beliefs, anything, you know, we want to make sure that this is, this is a place where people come to learn how to be critical thinkers. And, and this, is, this is what we want to stress. Uh, our Hispanic population is over 60%, as Dr. Goldsmith mentioned at the very beginning. So uh, we do target our Hispanic population a lot. And um, when we're doing outreach, I do a lot of uh, commercials in Spanish. And I, I never thought the impact that that would be that would have on the community. But when I'm out, people tell me, hey, I saw your commercial on on, on Spanish uh, while I was watching the news. And you know, I didn't know you spoke Spanish. I'm like, I barely speak English, so you should know that I do speak, I do speak Spanish. Spanish is my first language. Uh, so it, it's very important that our, that our students feel welcome and that they have people that look like them here on campus to really make them feel comfortable. Um, and, and that professional development for faculty and staff also to make sure that uh, students understand that, you know, we are here to serve them. Um, at all times, you know, I, I try to walk around any any time a meeting gets canceled or any time that I have an opportunity to go out and talk to students, um, I, I do it because I, I I have to remind myself and remind people that if it wasn't for our students, then you know what are we doing here? Uh, we're here to educate people, and and that's that's our job, that's our main job. Um, I try to hang out with our athletes. I, I I do as much as I possibly can with the time, the limited amount of time that we have. Uh, but it is important that students see us, even even us as presidents, walking around campus, greeting them, talking to them. Um, I often walk around with students and just just walk with them. I don't even tell them who I am or what I do, uh, and they don't ask. They, you know, they just you know we go follow along with the conversation. Sometimes I just walk into my office. They're like, "Oh, you're the president," and like, "Yes," but that doesn't matter. You know, we're here to to provide a, a service, and and, and I, I like to remind myself of that and make sure that all the staff and managers are aware of that as well. Thank you so much, Dr. Reyna, Dr. Pimentel, for your responses. Uh, a lot of great ideas came with it. One of my favorite uh, quotes from Dr. Reyna was to be a partner in education. And so what we know from our Latino students or from all of our students is that they are an intersectional identity. And part of that intersectional identity is being first generation college student. And so I myself was a first generation community college student. And I know that my parents uh, tried their best to, to help, but there was just some resources that we didn't know. Um, and I wish that I had had the resource of having financial aid explained to my parents, having uh, class schedule situations explained because my family did want to support me. They do want to support me. You know, I, I just finished school myself and they were right there uh, cheering me on. Uh, but it is a complicated process. So I love that community aspect in saying that we know that there are community members that want to support our students in their educational journey, but they just may not know how. And so I really appreciated that. And then Dr. Pimentel, I loved how uh, you just reiterated what all of our presidents are saying is that it's everybody's job to help our students feel welcome and included, uh, including the president, but also everybody here on this panel uh, and everybody who works within the college. 
we should all be thinking about how we're serving all of our students and helping all of our students feel welcome and included. Uh, and one population we could consider would be our Latino student population. So lots of great ideas and lots of great motivations to continue on well beyond Hispanic Serving Institutional Awareness Week and Hispanic Heritage Week. Uh, so I'll turn it over to Chancellor Goldsmith for some closing thoughts on the panel. We do uh, also encourage a Q&A. So at this time, if you have any questions, please feel free to write them in. If we don't have time to answer it on this webinar, we will continue to answer it throughout the week, throughout the school year. So Chancellor Goldsmith. Thank you. <clears throat> you know, as I was listening to uh, the presidents, uh, you may have heard a, a theme emerge about uh, engagement and uh, creating a sense of belonging and welcoming. Um, uh, that's critical to our mission. And uh, I know right now we are going through our process of uh, the State Center 2035, where we're re-examining our values. And uh, I think this very event uh, is really um, a demonstration of those values in terms of being not only inclusive, but uh, being intentional in creating environments where uh, a sense of belonging, you know, the, the first ever resolution for Hispanic Heritage Month, um, our building downtown uh, will be lit up in the official colors of the Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, this acknowledgement of Hispanic Serving Institution Week um, and this this very webinar, I think, speaks to what our willingness is uh, collectively to work together um, to support our Hispanic students and to support one another. You know, uh, Dr. Pimentel uh, uh, shared what came out of our EEO report, which we shared with the board a few months ago at each of our colleges throughout the district our Hispanic hirings in every category, administrator, classified professional, and a faculty member, both full-time and part-time, has increased over the last five years. And yet we know that's not enough because it's not merely enough just to make sure people see themselves in the people we hire. Of course, we're thoughtful and intentional, but uh, we have to do more than that. You know, Dr. Reyna talked about his ad in Univision. You might have saw one from the district as well. We're intentionally doing collective media buys, knowing where our students go, knowing where their families get information, to share information with our parents that education is important. Uh, we hear too often uh, when you pick up the newspaper or an article about how, you know, is higher education worth it? Uh, all of us, let me say this again, all of us, regardless of your race, regardless of your sex, regardless of who you love, who you pray to, uh, if you're a faculty member, classified member, all of us need to be able to share uh, the truth and, and what the importance of higher education is, not only in terms of economics, we know that. I mean, economics, and when you get a higher education, you get on that pathway, we know economically you're going to improve that student's life, that family member's life, but it's more than that. It's more than that. Becoming um, more educated helps your health. It helps your mental health. It helps you cre create a better understanding of the environment that we live in, both in terms of geopolitical environment, but also the physical environment. It is for a better citizenship that we must encourage all students to continue on their path. And when you look at the sheer volume of uh, Californians being Hispanic and Latino, it is uh, imperative that we share the value of uh, education. You know, I wanna go back to that point about Dr. Pimentel uh, showing that our Hispanic hires have been up. And while that is something we're all uh, very proud of, it's more than that. It's about a culture of a mindset of creating a belongingness an engagement and a welcomeness. That means we need to uh, educate ourselves about the importance of uh, uh, not only uh, months and weeks like this where we are celebrating Hispanic serving institutions and Hisp Hispanic Heritage Month, um, but that we think about being multicultural in our approach so all students and all employees feel welcome uh, and a sense of belonging here. 
I know in the in the question Daisy asked, are all state center campuses getting a multicultural center? Uh, so let me share uh, something here. I know Dr. Buckley is looking at repurposing some space uh, for that. And I believe the other presidents are looking at repurposing space as well. When you look at our enrollment, it's going up, but we know a lot of our students are staying online. So how do we repurpose some of our space uh, given that uh, you know, instruction is occurring virtually now. So how do we repurpose some of that space? Those are conversations that will be taking place at each of the uh, colleges as we go through that uh, 2035 visioning about who it is and who is it we serve? How is it we wanna serve? What do our buildings look like? Uh, what kind of spaces do we wanna create? Uh, we know that affinity space is important for our students and staff. Uh, so I would encourage all of you when you see those conversations occurring uh, on your campus that you become engaged, uh, you know, work uh, with the with the various uh, groups, whether you're an academic Senate or classified Senate or you're a student uh, and student government uh, engage in that process and speak your mind about what it is you would like to see. Uh, I think it'd be a wonderful thing if all of our campuses had that space uh, where we could come together and learn about different um cultures and how can we be a part in that mission and making sure people feel welcome here uh so i again i just want to thank the organizers of this group uh for putting this together uh, and i'll pause there except for one more thing to say you know you know really that is our main task right to work together to support our students and support one another i hope you hear my uh, my sincerity when i say that because i think all of you uh, on this uh, webinar and those who are not because they're actually right now maybe either eating lunch or meeting with the student you're doing that work and that's why we're seeing our enrollment improve so thank each and every one of you for the work that you do every day to advance our student success because that's why we're here As we wrap up today's event, we would like to thank our presidents and our chancellor for joining us today and all of you for attending. Please take the opportunity to research serving this and what it means to our campuses. We as Title Fives are here to provide educational resources and encourage you to look up Dr. Gina Garcia, who is a great resource for all things HSI and recommend you take a few moments to read her work. So thank you so much once again from all of us uh, District Title Five directors.